By the beginning of the Cambrian period, competition for a place at the top of the food pyramid intensified in the seas and oceans. This triggered the so-called Cambrian explosion. Living organisms began to acquire the most diverse and sometimes very bizarre forms. Many of them acquired powerful chintin armor. Others learned how to disguise themselves. But as in any era, predators became the main characters. Dino Carids were the thunderstorm of the underwater world of that time, the most famous representative of which was the Animalicaris. Subscribe to the channel Age of Dinosaurs. From our videos, you can learn a lot of interesting facts about extinct and modern animals. By commenting on our releases and liking them, you will help spread this content to a larger audience. Dino Carids, or Terrible Shrimp, until recently were considered the ancestor of anthropods. But now most scientists agree that this is not the case. And these strange creatures also have nothing to do with shrimp. There is practically no information about the real ancestors of Dinocarids. Most animals of the Precambrian period were soft-bodied. Finding their remains or any of their traces is very difficult. It is even more difficult to correctly identify and describe these finds. Most likely, their ancestor were annelids. Just over 500 million years ago, some of them decided that it would be more convenient to move around with the help of jointed limbs. Other annelids have acquired functional swimming devices. It was these swimmers who became the dinocarids, the main predators of the Cambrian seas. For 10 million years, representatives of this class of animals occupied the upper steps of the food pyramid. They were the perfect hunters of their time. Terrible shrimp had excellent eyesight, moved quickly in the water, and were the largest animals of the Cambrian period. The most famous representative of the class of dinocarids was the Animalicaris, or abnormal shrimp. The period of its existence is determined by scientists between 520 to 535 million years ago. Until recently, it was believed that this super predator of the Cambrian period would grow up to one meter in length. But recent research has shown that it could hardly be longer than 38 to 40 centimeters. Even such dimensions made Animalicaris one of the largest animals of its time. Its body, covered with a laminar shell, was ideally suited for hunting the inhabitants of the ocean floor. For swimming, he used special mechanisms similar in the structure of the parapodia, paired fleshy outgrowths characteristic of bristle annelids. In Animalicaris, these outgrowths were transformed into flat lobes. One of them was located a little lower and was slightly shifted back. It covered the gaps between adjacent elements of the top row. The lobe, which were located on segments close to the tail, were not preserved in almost any of the fossilized Animalicaris found. Scientists have no doubt that this predator had no less than 11 pairs of blades. Recent studies report 13 paired lobes on the trunk segments and 3 on the cervical. With the help of wave-like movements of such blades, which formed a kind of fin on both sides of the body, Animalicaris could develop a great speed. Also, the stability of the swimming was provided by a wide fan-shaped tail. Scientists believe that with such a body structure, Animalicaris should have had problems with maneuvering. One study even built a working model. The result of this study showed that it is not required to have a highly developed brain to control such a mechanism. The adaptations available to Animalicaris ensured the stability of the organism in water without the additional control from the nervous system. The mouth apparatus of all radiodonts, to which Animalicaris belongs, is also distinguished by an extremely unusual structure. Animals from this order lack teeth and modified limbs act as jaws. They are small processes that can hold food and direct it to the mouth opening. Animalicaris had two frontal appendages that could reach 18 centimeters in length. In different species of Animalicaris, 
These appendages differed slightly in structure, but they all consisted of 14 segments. Each segment was equipped with a spike called endite. The endite itself, approximately in the middle, could branch into several small spines. The mouth cone had a round shape and was divided into three segments using large rigid plates. Each sector consisted of three to four smaller plates, to which in between there were even smaller plates with a wrinkled surface. Such a ring, similar to a pineapple in a section, was able to contract and stretch, drawing the prey inward. Animalicaris breathe with the help of primitive gills. In their structure, they resembled thin threads, turning into lanceolate and reticulate lobes. An important adaptation that helped this ancient predator in hunting was a unique eye. Animalicaris eyes were spherical and faceted. Their diameter was about 4 centimeters. They consisted of 24,000 tiny lenses. This structure made it the most vigilant invertebrate animal. For comparison, the eye of the modern fly consists of only 4,000 elements. With such vision, the predator could see any prey, even in muddy water. It is believed that trilobites form the basis of the Animalicaris diet. But given the structure of the oral apparatus of these animals, many scientists question this theory. Trilobite shells were quite hard, and among the fossils found, no traces of contact of the mouth cone of Animalicaris with hard objects were found. Although some of the found shells of trilobites have similar traces, some researchers suggest that with the help of their frontal appendages, Animalicaris could hold and swing the victim from side to side. Due to the resulting tension, the segments of the shell were separated from each other and the victim's body was simply torn in half. So the predator got access to soft internal tissues. Not only Animalicaris had such an unusual structure, other Dinocarids were also predators and obtained their food using similar adaptations. Living approximately 508 million years ago, the Cambrerastor had a flat shape and a length of about 30 centimeters. His eyes were located on the upper side of the shell. Small appendages were located on the underside of the body. The distance between them was no more than a millimeter. It is assumed that with their help, he sifted the bottom soil, looking for small animals. One of the closest relatives of Animalicaris, Herdia victoria, in addition to a segmented shell that protects the soft tissues of the body, had additional protection for the head. This peculiar visor consisted of three large elements, but inside this structure was empty. No vital organs were placed underneath it. The only reasonable explanation for the presence of this tool was it was needed to plow the soil in search of prey. Opabenia was very tiny compared to the rest of her relatives. Its length was no more than 7 centimeters. This predator, who lived about 505 million years ago, is remarkable for its unusual adaptation for capturing prey. For this, Opabenia used a single process of great length. At the end of such a primitive tentacle was a rather impressive grasping claw. Due to the small amount of object information about animals that inhabited the planet more than 500 million years ago, it is almost impossible to trace the relationship of dinocarids and anthropods. In such cases, scientists try to detect at least a transitional form or similar creatures that lived at the same time as the object of study. In the case of the development of the terrible shrimp such as the creature found, it turned out to be a Kalincia, an animal that combined the features of anthropods and dinocarids. It was equipped with both primitive fins, like those of the Animalicaris, and small jointed legs along the entire body. Scientists suggest that this creature could choose which way was more convenient for him to move. We thank the viewers who watched our video to the end. If you're interested in learning about the origin of other prehistoric animals, we advise you to pay attention to the previous issues. Also, on the Dinosaur Age channel, you can learn about the latest scientific achievements and problems of modern human society. 
See you next time.